It's been a long time coming since I found a Star Trek that I could actually watch again. Picard did me right. Look, I'm not trying to be some sort of Star Trek snob, but there's a certain hierarchy in the Star Trek universe. And if you think Discovery is number one, I think you need to go see the door. So I just want to point out, you know, look, I remember being a small child and watching reruns of of Star Trek Next Gen, and I don't know that it came out. I don't even remember if, if like new episodes came out when I was a kid. I just remember coming home from school and watching it on the TV, things that existed in the past. And, you know, the, the original series, groundbreaking, definitely something uh, I totally understand why people love it. Obviously, I love uh, Next Gen, big fan of Deep Space Nine, kind of left off at Voyager. This is the first time I've been able to watch Star Trek since essentially Deep Space Nine went off the air. And it's kind of special. So I just wanted to share with you guys. Look, it's the Enterprise D in pewter. And I, I look, it can fight the, wow, look, it's, it's a, uh, ah, it's a Klingon cruiser. And I've also got a bird of prey. Look at this. Look at these guys. Made a pewter. Got him at a Star Trek convention. Who would have thought those even existed anymore? So look, if you're a Trek head, Trekkie, Trek wonder, whatever you want to call yourself, if you had a chance to catch this finale and the the entire season of Star Trek Picard season three, consider yourself. I mean, this was this was great. I can't say anything more. Like it was great. I loved it. I loved every second of it. The writing was good. There was payoffs and setups, and, and they actually thought about things. Clearly, they loved Star Trek. No one else is allowed to make Star Trek except for the showrunner of this show. No one. You know, Kurtzman gave up on it, and now you have. They're basically like, all right, th this is. We're just driving it in the ground. We don't care. Season one and two of Picard are the worst, god awful things on television. It's terrible. Yet here. I'm going to look up the showrunner because the showrunner deserves some credit because he also wrote and directed the last episode. The last episode, I'm going to I'm going to try to avoid spoilers. I'm just going to tell you how I felt. There might be some sm smiled spoilers. I'll, I'll try to tell you when I get there. I will say one thing. <laughs> There's a lot of member berries, but I love them because they make sense. Chekhov is the president of the of the uh, the Federation. That's that's great. He gave a monologue in the beginning. I love it. Uh, but then you have the idiots who clearly don't get it, didn't like it, and we'll talk. Let's look at some articles, some negative reviews of this. Let's go to CNN. Star Trek Picard fights the Borg again. An, e an ending that's easy to resist. Brought to you by the idiot Brian Lowry from CNN, who brought you such hot takes as... The Mandalorian finale hits the reset button while reset button while setting up an imperial problem. If you watch here, it's right here. If you watch The Mandalorian season three, <laughs> that's hot garbage, baby. Hot garbage. Anybody who's got a good take on this, Star Wars gets ready to celebrate finally a return to the movies. Bro. <laughs> no one cared about Star Trek celebration or Star Wars celebrations. And then another hot take. The Mandalorian finally comes into focus while giving out the Rebels yell. What are you talking about, dude? You watching the same show as I was? Clearly you weren't. It says here, since seven years as a reporter and columnist for the uh, LA Times, you don't mean seven years as a communist for the New York Times? Come on there, mofo. You're an idiot. So let's just, let's just see why this idiot doesn't like this. Um, you know, it's the, it's, the, <laughs> it's so funny why they're like, uh, why he's complaining. He's like, uh, the, oh, I'm trying not to spoil it because, because he says stuff here. And here's the showrunner, Terry Metalis, who wrote and directed the finale. Really great, great idea. 
Um, I just love the the whole arc. It's really great. But he says here, it's like uh, the ten episode send off still began to feel like too much of a good thing. Yeah, because there's too much of a good thing, right? I, I, I what? Right? If you are, if you're telling me that Strange New Worlds, Lower Decks, and Prodigy, and the the new movie starring Michelle Yeoh, I, I'm not watching those. I don't care. I'm not interested. What I want to see is good Trek, and none of that is good Trek. I don't need people like cursing at me the whole time. I don't need people making dumb jokes and not understanding how to be in a military force. I don't need any of that. Just garbage. And they're like, uh, they gave like they gave fans what they wanted, but still turned out to be pretty easy to resist because I didn't like it. The double ARP generation more than held their own. Like, shut up, dude. Shut up. He said that a sense of nostalgia was initially welcome, but it had essentially reached its limit. Really, I think they did a good job of balancing member berries with uh, the send-off that we never got, that we wanted. You know, if you're a fan and you went through the series, yeah, one of the best series endings ever is Star Trek The Next Generation. One of the best ways to conclude a series. But then you had a bunch of movies, and the movies, for the most part, were pretty poor. I don't think anyone's going to say that the movies hold a candle to what you got in the series itself. If you're a real fan, not a real fan, but if you're a fan, you're probably going to agree with me. So, you know, the movies became like action schlocky films, and that's not what Star Trek is. Star Trek's cerebral. It's supposed to be an exploration of morals and morality and, you know, what does the future hold for humanity? Not, let's shoot machine guns at the bar against the Borg, which is what we got in the very first one, right? And then it kind of degraded from then on. Some of the movies are okay, but for the most part, I think they're, people will say they're a downgrade. So here we have the next-gen crew, and we never really got the send-off that we we wanted. And this was also, it, was, it had like two jokes. The two jokes were so well executed. Worf is amazing. The old characters were amazing. They all blended together so well. I'm not going to break down the plot for you. I'm going to assume you watched it. I'm going to try to avoid spoilers. I'm here to show you why everybody else, uh, especially in the mainstream media, are a bunch of idiots because they liked the unwatchable Picard, season one and two, that made no sense. The only carryover that they even included, this is how bad the, the ratings must have been on Picard, is that they begged the old crew to come back, must have thrown a ton of money at them, and the only person they included from... Star Trek Picard Season 1 and 2, which you, Mr. Dope from CNN, must have loved so much, was Raffi, the only character. Everyone else is gone. Not a single character was brought back except for Raffi. And in fact, I thought she made a good addition. Just saying. So, uh, let's go to uh, let's the next article. This is from Space.com. From this dope, Scott Snowden, who I feel like I've read stuff from him before. And I don't even care enough to look him up. But Star Trek Picard Season 3 Episode 9 was an overkill of, of nostalgia. More people complaining. And this is, you know, before the finale. But they're just people whining about the show. And I just, I felt like this was an amazing season. I just absolutely loved it. I thought the finale was great. Fortunately for us, the New York Times gives us a good, a good review. So thank you for at least one person accepting that they thought it was a worthy send-off for the next-gen crew. In fact, and this is the mild spoiler that I'm going to give, if you have the surviving crew, whoever's left of Star Trek, and you want to hand over the baton, and you want to do a reboot, and you want to do it right, and you want to include this nostalgia of the old crew and introduce us to a world of a new crew, this is how you do it. This could be the re best reboot I've ever seen, I, or at least the most tactfully well done. You give everybody the nostalgia you want. You introduce us to some new characters that could lead us in a new direction and give us something new and interesting. A little bit of the old, a little bit of the new. And now I'm intrigued. I may actually watch it. We'll, would not watch Brave New Worlds. Still won't watch Brave New Worlds. I don't care. I'm not interested. Do not give me this like banter back and forth of nonsense. No. I don't want any of that, of you guys breaking ship decorum and whatever. No, don't want that. I like what I saw 
in the handoff. I want to see what a new crew could do. I will watch that show. You got me. I'll t- I'll do it. But I ain't going to watch no more garbage from Kurtzman. If Kurtzman's involved and he wants to do it, no. No thank you. I will move on. Um, But here you have them talking about what begins over 35 years ago begins ends tonight. He's not Australian. He's British. Um, but you know, we knew they were going to fight the Borg. That's great. This is a, this is pretty cool. Uh, I still, this guy says there were plot holes and the dialogue was campy. I don't know that there were actually plot holes. I thought there was like a little bit of weakness in certain tiny pieces of the plot of connecting certain dots. But I thought overall, pretty much anytime I had a question about the plot, they answered it. Unlike the Mandalorian, which is just absolute joke child show. And um, the story justified his existence, advancing each of the main characters and filling in some gaps. And it was a worthy send off for the crew. Absolutely. And I thought this is this is an interesting take. It confirmed that Next Gen was greater than the sum of its part. Of, co- of course, it's an ensemble crew. There's a large cast. There's like seven main cast members. They all had their own different episodes and shows. It wasn't the Picard show. And this is the, the the reviewer here is like, that might have been why the first two seasons of Picard didn't work so well. John Luke wasn't the best character he could be without his old friends. The chemistry wasn't as fluid. The story wasn't as deep. Yeah, because the old the, the Picard season one and two was written by Alex Kurtman, an idiot. And didn't have any there was didn't he wasn't even the captain of his own ship. None of it makes sense. That's just ridiculous. Here you had like a interplay of who's the captain. There's like 15 captains and all this other stuff. There's one piece that I'm going to say that I was a little disappointed. Not disappointed in. Disappointed is, is not the right way to put this. But I feel like there was a character who should have been able to give a longer legacy into Star Trek and wasn't given his, their time. And uh, if you watched it, you'll know who I'm talking about. I wish they would have been able to continue their time in Star Trek, but it, alas, it looks like they won't. But I really did enjoy the emotional send-off. I thought it was pretty good. There's a lot of good stuff going on here. The banter, I could watch the the Riker and Worf show all day long. The banter between those two is just brilliant. And just seeing the old cast acting circles around anything else you've seen in Trek for, you know, it's been like 20 30 years since you've seen good Trek and here you see it and it's effortless and it's a beautiful thing loved it just absolutely I felt the same way Red Letter Media felt where they were concerned and they were tr- uh, there was a trepidation of whether or not this was going to be a good show and they didn't want to get their hopes up and they're like well I'm cautiously optimistic and I don't know if I'm like really into this yeah I, I uh This was good. Felt real good. It felt good to enjoy Trek. It's been so long since I've gotten to enjoy Star Trek. And it was fun instead of just being a reviewer, being a fan. And that's what I felt was the most important part, is I got to be a fan. And uh, I really appreciated it. It was great. It brought a tear to my... This is I want to get like uh, eight Star Trek tattoos now. I'm gonna get all the all the Enterprises on my forearms. How's that sound? <laughs> this is this was good. It was it was a lot of nostalgia, a lot of member berries. But as our commenters and and my audience here has has told me, um, it showed me even my Star Trek wisdom has its limitations. Yes, uh, <laughs> I'll admit when I'm wrong. Bringing back the old. Good old fashioned enterprise. The you know, th- there's two classic models. There's the D, and there's the original Enterprise. And uh, there's just something about them that they look like hot rods. It looks they look awesome. So uh, this was an, as ten out of ten for me. Loved it, every bit of it. What did you think? Were you are you a Trekkie? Were you happy? When was the last time you were to a Trek convention? When was the last time you enjoyed Trek? I'm sure a lot of you enjoyed Voyager. Some of you probably even enjoyed uh, Enter- whatever that show was. Enterprise? I don't even remember what it was. The one with Scott Bakula that I refused to watch. I think I gave it like one episode and was like, nope, I'm out on this. <laughs> so 
Let me know what you think in the comments down below. Uh, thank you for listening. That's We appreciate it. We always do. We do have a live show. It's a uh, live stream, 7.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on Friday nights. It is our podcast. It's a full-length audio podcast. We review a whole bunch of things, give you a bunch of fun news, entertainment stuff. Catch all that and more. You can catch us on Instagram on orc underscore you if you like. Come interact with us there. We have some great giveaways. And as uh, for us... We're done with this one. G give me another season or give me the new spinoff. I'll take both and I'll review them both. But I am on to the next one. Mm -hmm.